New Dr. Phil. A teenager in Anchorage, Alaska has been charged with killing her best friend. Police call it a bizarre catfish scheme. Authorities say the 19-year-old man allegedly promised to pay $9 million if she murdered someone and videotaped it for him. You believe that that is one of the primary reasons that your daughter is dead today. I was powerless for the first time in my life. The peace and tranquility of the Alaskan mountains was shattered this summer when the beautiful landscape became the scene of a gruesome crime. An innocent teenage girl, Cynthia, was allegedly lured into the woods, tied up and shot to death. But in a shocking twist, the person suspected of murdering this young girl wasn't a stranger. Police claim she was killed by one of the people she trusted the most in the world, another teenager her very best friend, Denali. This reported thrill kill allegedly had a horrifying motive. Authorities say 19-year-old Denali Brimmer had been chatting with a man online, a man she thought was a handsome young millionaire named Tyler. But Denali was unknowingly chatting with an alleged child predator who had a sick and twisted request. He allegedly promised to pay Denali nine million dollars if she murdered someone and videotaped it for him. According to authorities, Denali agreed and selected her best friend, innocent and sweet Cynthia Hoffman, the perfect victim. They say she convinced Cynthia to hike to a nearby waterfall with some other of her friends, and that is where she met her death. Cynthia's murder made national headlines, and it was every father's worst nightmare. Anchorage police are asking for your help searching for a missing woman. They say 19-year-old Cynthia Hoffman is developmentally disabled. She has a mentality and maturity of a 12-year-old, and her father says she was last seen at Russian Jack Springs Park Sunday afternoon. Cynthia Hoffman was killed earlier this month. Police say that a man posed online as a millionaire and then offered the suspect money to commit a murder and send him pictures of it. One day after she was reported missing, police found her body bound with duct tape along a riverbed not too far from where we are. Cynthia Hoffman was lured to this trail under the guise of going for a hike. Accused of the unthinkable, 18-year-old Denali Bremer, 16-year-old Caden McIntosh, and 19-year-old Caleb Leland appear in state court for their alleged roles in the murder of Cynthia Hoffman. The investigators say Bremer and several others killed their friend Cynthia Hoffman, execution style. According to charging documents, Hoffman, McIntosh, and a female friend of Hoffman's were together on Sunday. The friend told police they were driving back to Anchorage when they decided to stop at Thunderbird Falls. She says they were playing around in the woods when all three agreed that Hoffman should be tied up with duct tape so they could take pictures of her. According to court documents, Bremer struck up an online relationship with 21-year-old Darren Schillmiller, who lives in Indiana. He claimed he was a millionaire named Tyler and instructed her to murder someone and send photos and videos. Bremer offered four other friends a cut of the money. The only thing I know is that my daughter trusted these people. Now I have to bury her. After the murder, police say Denali spun a web of lies to Cynthia's father and convinced him his daughter ran away to throw him and police off their tracks. Today, in an exclusive interview, her father, Timothy Hoffman, reveals how he refused to give up on finding Cynthia, determined to find her and her killers. He and a close family friend who was like a mother to Cynthia, Michaela Kelly, join us by a satellite from Alaska. Timothy, Michaela, I'm very glad to talk to you, but very, very sorry for the very sad occasion, and I'm very sorry for your loss. I can't even begin to tell you how sorry I am what has happened here. Thank you. Timothy, tell me how you're doing at this point. I'm holding my family together, bed at nighttime, or have nightmares hunting my daughter, trying to find her. She had a slight disability that she was so eager to have friends, and she named Denali one of her best friends, and she'd go with Denali every so often. When was the last time you saw Cynthia? That morning, 
I gave Cynthia money to take to Sydney, it's her sister, and they're all getting ready. And Cynthia was telling me how she wanted to get together with one of her friends to go to the movies. So I told him to have a good time, just make sure you call me all the time. And, you know, during that day, I talked to my daughter. The last time I talked to her was at 2.37. And was that a nice exchange? Was it a cordial, happy, warm exchange that you had with her at 2.37? Yeah, I was just telling her, hurry up, get to your sister. She's waiting for her money. Mm -hmm. They all want to have a good time. I go, who are you with? And then she told me, Denali. She trusted Denali, and I trusted my daughter's judgment. Right. Well, you had no red flags at all about Denali in terms of, oh, you shouldn't be with her. In your mind, she was Cynthia's friend, and you had no reason to suspect otherwise. Correct. Can you tell me what happened to your daughter, just in your own words, what, what you understand took place? What has happened is they went out to Wasilla, and as they're out there, you know, my daughter's hanging out, having a good time with her friends. They got to Wasilla on the way back. They stopped by Thunderbird Falls. My daughter, she just wanted friends. She just wanted to have fun, so she's going with the whole thing. Then Allie and Caden, decided to walk up a path with her, have a good time. And then somehow, Denali convinced my daughter she was the type of person that if you asked her to do something, she really liked you, she'd do it. And uh, they made some sort of duct tape game. But when, when they went too far with the duct tape game, my daughter started panicking. So they released it off her mouth and released it off her hands. And my daughter says, I'm calling the police for sexual abuse and kidnapping. Well, when she turned around, Caden reached over to Denali, and Denali held her hand open on, with Denali's gun. Caden grabbed it and shot my daughter in the back of the head. And we shot, when she shot my daughter in the back of the head, my daughter fell down twitching, still trying to make the phone call. And then I believe she got pushed in the river by both of them. I don't think it was just Caden. I'm so sorry, Timothy. Forget about Dr. Phil, just dad to dad here. I, I can't even imagine you trying to wrap your head around this. I am so sorry for what you're having to go through here. Thank you. Do you know where the gun came from? The gun belonged to Denali. She brought the gun. I'm sure this was premeditated because she had the gun. It was loaded. She had the duct tape. She had the things and she was prepared for it. When you last talked to her at 2.37, at that point, do you think there was already a plan to go into the woods and, and take your daughter's life? Yes. You said that they got out there and started playing this, this duct tape game. So do you think they said to her, this is all just a game in order to get her? to go along with it and allow herself to be taped up? Yeah, my daughter would have went along with it, trust in Denali, because to her it would have been funny until she got her mouth duct taped and her hands duct taped. Knowing her, you think she would have at that point panicked, been uneasy with what was going on? Yes, she felt uncomfortable with what was going on. She panicked and they released her mouth and hands and at that time, she threatened to call the police. And as she turned around, that's when she got shot. Michaela, you, you certainly knew Cynthia as, about as well as, as anyone. Is it surprising to you that she would be so trusting and, and believe that these friends were just having a good time? No, it's not surprising. Cynthia is very trusting. She considered Denali her friend because they had said they were gonna play this duct tape game and then they were gonna take pictures of each other being duct taped up and they started with Cynthia. There wouldn't have been anything that Cynthia would have recognized as danger. Cynthia's a vulnerable adult. You're talking about they were going into the woods and they're saying, okay, we're gonna tape each other up and take pictures so we can tease people or trick people into thinking we've been abducted or we're somehow being 
bound and gagged here, and we'll put these pictures up on social media or whatever, that this was a gag, this was a prank, is what they said to her. Right. And you two know this because of what's been said in the police reports, correct? Yes, what's been said in the police reports is where that um, information came from, and just knowing that this would not have set off a red flag for her. This would have just been a game, something fun to do, and they were going to do it to each other. Everybody's pictures were going to be up. But you know that this, this game was being perpetuated against Cynthia because of what Denali has said and what Caden have said to the police, correct? Correct. Okay. You say she would want to please her friends. She was a people pleaser, would want to go along with it and not stop the game right. in some way. She thought she was having fun. Right. She thought she was going along just having fun and cutting up and, and all of that. And then it got bad. The police report says, she said, I'm going to call the police and tell them I've been kidnapped and sexually assaulted. And I understand the kidnapping part because she was taped up. Why the sexual assault? Why was she saying this? We don't know, at least I don't know. Uh, we do not have the coroner's report for what has happened. Denali said that, uh, Cynthia said, she was going to call the police and tell them that she had been kidnapped and sexually assaulted. Now, sexually assaulted would not have been a word in Cynthia's vocabulary, but that's what they reported back. And then Caden said the same thing. So tell me, when and where was your daughter's body found? In the river. Her legs were still tied up with duct tape. And how long had she been in the water? Do they, have they made an estimation of that? Well, they found her the next day. I would say they found her about three o'clock. Take me through the moment that you learned and realized for certain that she had been killed. When she didn't come home all night, I knew something happened wrong in my heart. But people wouldn't let me go there in my head. I knew that I programmed my children so much that she would have answered my calls. She was daddy's right-hand man. The minute 8 o'clock went around, I worried. The minute 11.30 went around, I was scared out of my mind. The next morning, I knew something happened to my baby. And then when they came to my door and knocked on it later on that night, I didn't even have to get out of bed. I knew what happened before I even made it to them. I said, she's dead, isn't she? And they pulled me aside and said, yes, Mr. Hoffman. What did you say to yourself when you heard the words from the police? I wish I could have been there to save my baby. I always protect my children. That's why they answered the phone every time I called. That's why they barely got out of my sight. And when they did, we set up protocols. And when the protocols failed that day, I knew something went wrong. Who do you believe came up with the idea to take your daughter's life? Coming up. Investigators say it all began with a bizarre online catfishing scheme hatched by 21-year-old Darren Schillmiller thousands of miles away in Indiana. So somebody allegedly said, I'm going to give you millions of dollars if you will go commit a murder and do it all on tape. Monday, she blames herself for her baby's death. Ever since I lost my daughter, I put myself in erratic situations. But is her high-risk behavior? You actually destroyed your apartment, right? I smashed all the dishes. I ripped up the carpet, burned holes. It's uncontrollable. Driving her husband away. I have been with another woman. Well, other woman or other women? Woman. If you're not going to be honest, then this is just a waste of time. That's Monday. Then on Tuesday. Her daughter had to spend a month in a mental health facility just to get over a boy. From breakup to breakdown. I didn't know how to handle the situation. Not everybody you lose is a loss. That's Tuesday. We now return to A Murder in Alaska, a Dr. Phil exclusive. 
A teenager in Anchorage, Alaska has been charged with killing her best friend. Investigators say it all began with a bizarre online catfishing scheme hatched by 21-year-old Darren Schillmiller, thousands of miles away in Indiana. Without ever even meeting her, he allegedly led Bremer to believe he was a multi-millionaire named Tyler, enticing her with an offer of $9 million to kill Hoffman and send him pictures and videos of the crime. It's my understanding that Denali was involved, allegedly, on the internet with someone that was enticing her with money to do certain things. What's your understanding of this? He was a 21-year-old kid, but when he met Denali, somehow he convinced her that he was a millionaire and that he offered $9 million to molest 8 to 15-year-old children and take pictures of it and give him a killing on video. And he said his name was Tyler and he was from Kansas, correct? He's from Indiana. Yeah, he said he was from Kansas, yes. but he's actually from Indiana. Now, when you say when Denali met him, she never actually met him in person, only over the internet, correct? They just text back and forth over the internet. Yeah. So somebody she never even met, allegedly, said, I'm going to give you millions of dollars if you will go molest some children and commit a murder and do it all on tape. I'll give you $9 million. And you believe that as a product of that, that that is one of the primary reasons that your daughter is dead today? Yes, I do. Who do you believe came up with the idea to take your daughter's life? I believe Denali did. You think this started with Denali? Denali put it all together when it came to Caden, Caleb, and a few other people. Denali promised everybody to cut the money. They all started the plot. I think the plot started when Denali came to my house and asked if Cynthia could go stay the night with her for five days. And that's when the plot started. Timothy, you mentioned that you think that Cynthia was really vulnerable in certain ways. Tell me what you mean by that. Cynthia had a slight disability to where all her life, all she wanted was friends. She just wanted to hang out with friends. She would do anything with her friends. When this Denali came into her life, it was because she went to school with Denali. And once every few months, she'd bring Denali over to our house. And Denali was a fast talker. She always made me feel uncomfortable a little bit, but Cynthia assured me that they're best friends. And so, you know, when it came to Cynthia staying the night a couple of times, it was all great and dandy. I never had any idea what Denali was really plotting. Never knew what was really going on. You think this may have had its roots further back, that, that she may have been allegedly plotting this for a good while? Yes that this whole friendship may have been a sham. Yes. Is it fair to say that Cynthia was not a worldly young woman, not as engaged socially as others? Exactly. She tried really hard to have friends. Now you say at first Denali played the role of worried friend, correct? Yes. What did she say to you when you first reached out to see where's, where's my daughter? What did she first say? Coming up. Shill Miller and Bremer are also facing child porn charges. So after this happened, Denali didn't go into some remorseful meltdown, oh my God, what have I done? She was out recruiting more victims. Murder in Alaska, a Dr. Phil exclusive continues. 
In court, 18-year-old Denali Bremer showed no emotion as she appeared to admit her role in an elaborate plot to murder her friend, Cynthia Hoffman. According to the criminal complaint, on June 2nd, Bremer and 16-year-old Caden McIntosh took Hoffman on a hike where they allegedly bound her with duct tape before McIntosh shot her in the head and dumped her in a river. Police found Hoffman's body a day later, and the scheme began to unravel. Shill Miller and Bremer are also facing child porn charges. Through his fake online account, police say he was able to convince her to sexually assault two minors and then send him videos. Do you have any understanding, Michaela, Timothy, of Denali being involved in this kind of violation of other people, molestation or physical violence, before engaging with this person on the internet? My answer would be, uh, it was her upbringing. Denali went through a lot of roughness, but they never knew that she would have something like this in them. Has she ever been charged with molestation or assault or anything before? Not that I Not know. Not that I know of. Denali had pictures on her phone of an eight-year-old that she molested and took pictures of for this man, as well as a 15-year-old. Prior to that, none of us had any knowledge of Denali in terms of that kind of behavior. But there were kids in that neighborhood who were talking about the fact that Denali was going to take pictures of him. And she was hanging around in the same age group, but they had younger siblings. You know a lady out there. She popped in my room after my daughter got shot. And she told me that Denali came to her house and she tried to convince her to let her children go to the park for a few hours with her. But she wouldn't let her children out of her sight. And so whatever was on Denali's mind at the time, could it be followed through? I think after my daughter got shot, she tried to get more victims. So let me understand this timeline then. So after this happened, Denali didn't go into some remorseful meltdown, oh my God, what have I done? She was out recruiting more victims, according to this timeline and what you've heard from your friend. Yes. So no remorse. She had no remorse. But at first she played the role of worried friend, correct? Yes. What did she say to you when you first reached out to see where's, where's my daughter? What did she first say? We had a phone call conversation at first saying that she dropped my daughter off at Polar Bear Park because my daughter was worried that she'd get in trouble. And I asked her why and she mentioned about marijuana and I said, well, my daughter don't do marijuana. She was just trying to cover up what she has done. And then after that, for about two to three hours, it was text kind of not every so often saying how she was worried about my daughter, that my daughter be home safely, that not to worry. And this is already after the fact that she has killed my daughter. Because she, they were best friends and she said she really questioned Cynthia's relationships with her past boyfriends, that Cynthia did not make good choices when it came to boyfriends. That was wrong. So she was blaming this on her, trying to set it up. Yes. And then I called two police officers. He ended up calling Denali. Denali tried to throw the police officer off the track again, saying my daughter was out partying all night long, doing drugs and smoking weed and partying, and she'd been doing it for a while. I know my daughter. My daughter spent day after day after day with me, helped me in my construction world. All she wanted to do is make daddy proud. But when Denali tried to make my daughter look like a partier, the police officer came over to my car and said, your daughter's just a druggie. She's just a partier. And I kept on telling him that my daughter wasn't a druggie, that it was wrong. But that's the thing, I did know her. And that's when I knew something was wrong. And the real culprit here, in terms of wasting time, Denali is telling you things that cause you to be searching in the park while your daughter is in the water. We don't know whether it was too late or not, but if she hadn't lied and misdirected you and others, you could have gotten to your daughter and perhaps rendered her aid if Denali hadn't sent you on a wild goose chase, correct? Coming up. They also 
took all of Cynthia's belongings and burned them. So you're left with nothing from that day. How does that affect you? Before we get back to today's show, I want to tell you about a new season of my true crime podcast, Mystery and Murder, Analysis by Dr. Phil. Intruders killed three members of the Caffey family in a brutal assault. The father barely survived, and his 16-year-old daughter, Erin, was believed to be kidnapped. One of those intruders was Charlie Wilkinson, Erin's boyfriend. In episode two, a family slaughtered for teen love, police tracked down Charlie and the other assailants. It isn't long before their sinister plan to murder is revealed. Episodes one and two are available now for free on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. And there's a new one every week. You can also check out Fill in the Blanks and my wife's new podcast, I've Got a Secret with Robin McGraw. Now let's get back to our exclusive murder in Alaska. If she hadn't lied and misdirected you and others, you could have gotten to your daughter and perhaps rendered her aid if Denali hadn't sent you on a wild goose chase, correct? Correct. Denali bragged her mom saying that Caden killed Cynthia and like it was an everyday occurrence. All I know is they released uh, Denali and all my family members were out there and they were getting texts about things with Denali and her statements in these messages where she enjoyed watching my daughter get shot through the head. Denali sent text messages to who? Denali sent text messages to another man out there. The man somehow reached out to my niece and my niece showed me these texts that Denali's been bragging about what's been going on to him, how Denali enjoyed watching everything that happened and that she's the one that owned the gun. Okay, so Denali is bragging around town that not only did she murder your daughter, but she's proud of it. Yes. Yes. And your niece actually saw some text messages between Denali and this man? Yes, the, the man sent my niece the copies of it and it stayed straight out that she was enjoying it. They also took all of Cynthia's belongings and burned them. So you're left with nothing from that day. How does that affect you? It bothers me. It bothers me so bad I wanted to know what was going on. What went through her mind in those final moments? Probably yelling my name. She didn't see it coming. She had her back turned. But I imagine when she was panicking, she was yelling, Daddy. That's the only thing I could picture her. And there was nothing I could do. I was powerless for the first time in my life. My girl's never done drugs. My girl's never drank. My girl's never did wrong. And even when I grounded them because they did something wrong that was minor, I'd say, I'm taking your phone and I'm grounding you for a gay or two. 30 minutes later, they had back their phone and grounding was over. Because <laughs> they were daddy's babies. Of course. Timothy, if, if Cynthia is listening to us right now, what do you have to say to her? I love you, girl. <laughs> daddy will send them all to hell. I tell her daddy will love you from now until the end and that I will take every person that had something to do with this and I will make sure the law throws a book at every one of them. I want every one of them to serve that 99 years, even the 15 year olds. I understand. If I couldn't help her when she got shot, I could help her by putting her killers away. And I will be at every court appearance listening to what they got to say. But when it is time for me to speak again, the thing I will say is, I hope you enjoy your life in prison. Coming up. I know it's not my fault, but I should have kept her home. Do you feel like you let your daughter down? 
Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. She blames herself for her baby's death. Ever since I lost my daughter, I put myself in erratic situations. It's like if I get her killed, that's okay. It's uncontrollable. That's Monday. Murder in Alaska, a Dr. Phil exclusive, continues. I know what I did was wrong, and I know I could have probably done something different if I was able to. It sounds like Denali Bremer confesses despite the judge's repeated calls not to discuss the case. The 18-year-old is charged with first-degree murder in the death of Cynthia Hoffman. Charging documents say Bremer instructed McIntosh to shoot Hoffman because she could not do it. Leslie Sonnenberg was also very close to Cynthia. She describes herself as almost an older sister to the teen girl. Leslie had insight into Cynthia's life that even her own father didn't. She also knew her alleged killer. Here's what she had to say about this tragedy. Leslie, we're kind of trying to get a feel for everything about this and we really want people to know Cynthia and we don't want this to be all about these atrocious offenders here. You knew her different, of course, than her dad did. And you also knew Denali as well, correct? Yes, I've met her a few times. Were you aware of Denali ever having any transgressions against other people before this? Had you heard anything or had she ever been inappropriate with Cynthia before? No, she's never been inappropriate. I know uh, one time Cynthia and I ran into, and Sydney was there as well, her sister Sydney was there. We ran into Denali at a Walmart and um, she was talking um, to me and at that time Denali was pregnant. You know, I was like, oh cool, you're pregnant. Do you know what you're having? It's a wonderful news. And she goes, I can't wait for this and it to be done. And I looked at Cynthia and I looked at Denali you're eight months pregnant and you can't wait for this and it to be done. It was a real shock to me that there was that disconnect. When um, we were done at Walmart, got in the car with Cynthia and I said, how'd that make you feel to know that your friend said that? And she goes, I'm shocked to hear that. And then we started going off on what are some of the things Denali's going to be doing. She goes, she's going to be putting her child up for adoption. And I said, I feel that is the best decision that Denali could have made. She did place the baby for adoption? Yes. Well, she's trying to play a role that she misses her child and she don't want her daughter knowing that she's, your mom's growing up to be a murderer. Do you feel like you let your daughter down? <clears throat> kind of because I couldn't save her. I've always been able to solve everybody's problem. And this problem I couldn't solve. I couldn't be there for her and I couldn't stop it. I trusted in my daughter's decision that it was her best friend. But all it was was a plot to kill my daughter and my daughter had no idea it was coming. And during all this, Denali would text my phone and try to cover up her checks and send me on a wild goose chase. I know it's not my fault, but I should have kept her home. I should have made her get with her sister and stay with her sister. I know that there are times that you already have and are going to spend time saying, you know, why didn't I keep her home? Why didn't I say no? It's my job to protect her. I want to tell you why you didn't see this coming. And the answer is this. Coming up. I had her cremated. I had two necklaces made for myself with their ashes in it. And I won't take it off for nothing. Now return to a murder in Alaska, a Dr. Phil exclusive. Cynthia's father was desperate to go and see for himself the spot where his daughter took her last breath. 
Timothy believed that if he went to where Cynthia fought for her life, he would feel her presence there and have the answers he was seeking. He asked us to come along, and my producer, Sarah Carden, went with him to Thunderbird Falls. It is a beautiful place that is now filled with a foreboding darkness. This is the first time you've been here. This is the same path that your daughter, Cynthia, walked on the last moments of her life. Why did you want to come here? Needed answers. Wanted a sign. I don't know how cruel people could be. I don't know why somebody had set somebody up like Cynthia so innocent. Do you feel like her presence is here right now with you? Yeah. I want all the answers. My mind won't rest until they go to jail for a very long time. Police say she may have been alive when she went into the water. What do you feel happened to her? That she, when she was shot, she was still alive, and then she got pushed in and drowned. She was twitching when she went down, still trying to call the police. And then they pushed her in the river. I live it over and over in my head again. It's not fair. I questioned my belief that one time. There's a purpose for this. The purpose was to take down all these people because they must have been doing it for a while. But I wish they would not have used my daughter's life to do it. What message do you want to tell your daughter in the last place where you know she was? That I love her. And I'll take all the ones that killed her and I will make sure they never see the light of day again. Tell me about the cross you're wearing. It's important to you, why? I had her cremated. I had two necklaces made for myself with their ashes in it, with their name on it and her favorite song and her fingerprint. And I won't take it off for nothing. What would Cynthia want for you? Me to make sure that it never happens to anybody again. To make sure that the people can't ever do it to anybody again. That's what she would have wanted. I love you, Cynthia. Don't worry. They won't get away with it. Daddy will see to it. Hear my cry and know that I love you. Coming up. You are going to spend time saying, why didn't I keep her home? Why didn't I say no? I, I want to tell you why you didn't see this coming. I want to tell you why you didn't see this coming. And the answer is this, our minds, a normal, healthy, loving, caring parent like yourself, your mind doesn't go to that evil place that these killers' minds go. And so it's just virtually impossible for you to anticipate something like this because as a parent, you look at it and say, okay, she wants to go with her friends, so let me run through all the possible scenarios here. You know, they could get in a car wreck or, you know, they could go drink or something or they could get with some boys or they could do that. You can go through all the possible scenarios and on your list of scenarios, Having your daughter taken out in the woods, taped up, shot in the back of the head, and pushed in the river, that's not on your list, is it? That, that's just not on your possible scenarios list because your mind is too healthy to go to that end of the continuum. And you can't anticipate something that your mind can't comprehend. And that's how sick people, that's how murderers get the advantage on healthy people because our minds can't go where their minds go. Do you hear what I'm saying when I, when I tell you that? Yeah. We want to celebrate 
the life of Cynthia. She lived so many years and she just died one day. We want to celebrate those years that she touched so many lives and we're going to make that a part of what we're doing here, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. 18-year-old Denali Brimmer showed no emotion when she appeared in court, only saying, I know what I did was wrong. She is charged with murder and has also been indicted on federal child pornography charges. Darren Schillmiller has pleaded not guilty to charges of child pornography and murder. The other four defendants, two of which are minors, have all pled not guilty to the murder charges against them. For more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I want to thank my guests, Timothy, Michaela, and Leslie, for sharing Cynthia's story. She will never be forgotten. We hope her family finds justice and peace. How long will I love you? As long as stars are above you. And longer if I can. Cynthia is happy all the time. How long will I need you? As long as the seasons need to. She's had a glow in her like no other. How long will I be with you? As long as the sea is bound to. Everybody Cynthia met, she touched all their hearts. you.